Hello everyone. So in this part, we will look into ext2 file system. So one of the fundamental structures in ext2 file system is inode. So inode stands for indirect node. It is a structure used to store all of the file metadata, including the disk blocks that belong to the file. Okay. So a typical structure of inode is, is as shown on the slide. So here we contain a lot of data that corresponds to the file metadata, like file size, owner, group, permissions, timestamps, so on and so forth. We also contain file block pointers. These are the pointers to the disk blocks to, uh, that belong to the file. We also contain a pointer to indirect block, which is, as the name suggests, it's an indirect block that stores pointers to additional disk blocks. Similarly, we also have a pointer to doubly indirect blocks that stores pointer to indirect blocks. Finally, we also have triple indirect blocks that store pointers to double, double indirect blocks. So this allows the file size in a ext file system to be very large. Like, uh, in, like let's say we have, uh, let's say a typical ext2 file system where we have 12, 12 file block pointers and one indirect pointer, one double indirect pointer, and finally one triple indirect pointer, okay? So here, uh, five, 12 file block pointers allows file size to be 40 kilobytes. Now the additional uh, single indirect pointer allows file size to be extended by 4 MB. And additional one double indirect pointer allows file size to be extended by 4 GB. And one triple indirect pointer allows file size to be extended by 4 TB. So the total file size or like the maximum file size in ext2 file system is more than four terabytes. That's very large. And this in contrast with FAT, this is huge because in case of FAT file system, the maximum file size is 4 GB, which is way too small compared to the file size that is supported by ext2. That's why FAT, although it's very efficient, it's not good or rather it's not, a, uh, it's not ideal if you have to store really, really large files. That's why it's mostly used on smartphones where the file size has, are usually small. Okay, so ext2 in order to support locality, ext2 splits the disk into block groups. So, and uh, the inode table, instead of maintaining inode table for the entire disk, inode table is now spread within each block group. So each block group can be considered as an independent disk in itself, okay? So where each block group contains a super block, it contains a bitmap for all the data blocks within the block group. And similarly, inode bitmap for all the inodes in this block group, and there is inode table that contains all the inodes, finally data blocks. Okay. So we can imagine the block group to be a cylinder on the disk platter. So that like, uh, so that there is no seek that is needed by the disk head if it has to read blocks within a block group. There is only rotation that is needed, right? Because the disk head can stay at the same place and just by the rotation of the cylinder or the track, we can read all the blocks that belong to the block group. Whereas to read between the block groups, we need head seeks. Okay. So in order to allow locality, in order to allow like fast access, all files that belong to the same directory are stored in the same block group. Okay. And subdirectories that belong, subdirectories within the same directory are stored in different block groups in order to make sure that like the data is well spread. And while assigning the data blocks to the files, ext2 uses a first fit algorithm. Basically, it just finds the first available block, which is closest and it will assign that particular block. For instance, let's say first, let's say I want to write a small file, which is of let's say uh, two blocks, okay? We just scan to find the first free block. We just use that free block. And the next free block, we again scan to find the next free block. We use that free block. Okay. 
Now let's say if you want to write large file, then again we see we we do a sequential sweep to find the first free block, and then we just try to use the first free block. And when we want another free block, free block, we just uh, go to the next block to see if that is free. If that is free, then we just use it, so on and so forth. Okay. So this uses very nice advantages. Specifically, it provides an efficient storage for both small and large files because, like, if it is small file, if even if there is segmentation or like fragmentation, it's usually minimal. And for large files, all most of the disk blocks are stored within the same block group that allows fast access because there is no head seek involved. Okay. And finally, because uh, all the inodes and the data blocks of, of all the files within the same directory are stored in the same block group, it provides nice locality and fast access. But one disadvantage is uh, the storage is not efficiently used for uh, for tiny files and even for large files because there is a lot of encoding that goes uh, into the advantages that ext2 provides. So specifically, there is 10 to 20 percent of the space that is wasted to avoid fragmentation. So what that means is, uh, let's look at this right. So here the actual blocks that are used to store data are the data blocks, right? So the other blocks are like, uh, yeah, we can consider even, let's say, uh, I know table is also uh, useful data. So I know table and the data blocks are the useful data. Rest all, rest all usage is inefficient because we are not exactly storing the data. So we are not exactly storing the user data. We are using this I know map and data block bitmap in order to avoid fragmentation. So that is that can be considered as uh, inefficient usage, okay? Because we should maximize the usage of disk blocks to store user data, not to store meta, not to store the data that is needed for management, right? So this leads, to, this causes uh, a small disadvantage in case of ext 2 because 10 to 20% of the space could be wasted just to avoid fragmentation or just to store uh, these inode bitmap or this block bitmap. So uh, a quick like review of uh, file systems. So here, uh, one thing we need to remember is, uh, so when we have to, when we want to read a file, it's really important that we have read access to all the directories in the in the path. For instance, here in this case, let's say I want to access file three, which is under folder two, which itself is under folder one, okay, and which is under root. Okay. So here, first, we need to have access to the root folder. So if you do not have access to the root folder, that means like if we cannot read the root directory, then we cannot get, we cannot uh, go into the first, that we cannot go into the directory one, okay? So we should have read access to root directory. And then we should also have read access to one directory because that's how we will get the inode number for two directory. Then we should also have read access into two directory because that's how we'll get inode number for three directory, for three files. Okay, finally, we should have uh, read access to the three file as well because that's how we will get, uh, we will read the content of the three file. So note that, it, so in order to read the content of the file three, we need to have read access. However, in order to just get the inode number of file three, we don't need read access to that file. We only need read access to the directory because the directory is where the inode number will be stored, right? So, so if you have read access to the directory two, you can read the inode number of file three, even if you don't have read access to file three, okay? So this is uh, a small subtle difference that you need to remember. Uh, like reading inode number, you can read inode number without having read access to the file, provided you have read access to the 
parent directory. Okay. And another example is uh, make directory. So here, make directory is a bit interesting. So for in order to create directory, you need to have read access to all the directories except for the uh, parent directory. For instance, here in this case, let's say I want to create directory C under directory B, which is under directory A, okay? So here, first I need to have read access to directory A because that's how I get directory B. I know number for directory B. And once I get I know number for directory B, I should also have write access to directory B because I'm trying to create a file, which is which means I'm trying to write to the directory, okay? So in order to create directory C, I should have at least read access to directory A and read and write access to directory B, okay? Similarly, you can extend this to longer file as well. So for all the directories in the path, we should have like read access, at least read access, except for the last directory or like except for the uh, parent directory or like penultimate directory for, uh, for which we should have both read and write access. And uh, file system spends a lot of time walking down the directory paths because in order to access, in order to get the inode number of a file, it needs to know the inode number of the directory, which again, for which it also needs to know the inode number of the previous directory, so on and so forth. So operating system usually caches uh, the inode numbers or like caches the lookups of different directories. So that's why if you access certain, like if you, are, if you try to access files in the same directory, usually the lookup is faster because operating system caches these uh, file traversals. So here in this slide, I show, uh, I'll show a few examples or rather like I'll show an example and to see how you can, like how we can explore or rather go into the internals of ext2 file system. So all these instructions you can try on your machine. So the file is uploaded to the lectures website as shown on the slide. So here, these are all the commands that you can run and they will execute. And these are tested on Ubuntu machine. So if you have Mac OS, uh, then these things should work. Yeah, these things mostly would, would work on Mac OS as well. But yeah, just give it a try. These uh, instructions may not work on ECN grid because you need a uh, sudo access to run certain commands, okay? which I hope you don't have on uh, ECN grid. Okay, so here first we get the file, which is disk.imd. It's basically a file that has the ext2 file system on it. So we get the disk, we uh, extract it, and we mount the disk in temp myfs. And as you can see at the end, we were able to successfully mount the disk image onto the temp myfs. So now when we look into the files in the file system, there are four files. And there is one symlink file, which is a symlink to file AA. So, and we can actually look into the super block of the file. So in order to get to the super block, we first need to read the raw device, right? So, because now we cannot access the file because that will depends on, that will be accessed by the file system. We need to access the device itself. In order to access it, so if you use df, which gives all the mounted file systems, you will get the device that is like the device that is created by the operating system for the file that is mounted. So here we can see that uh, slash dev loop six is the device that is created by Linux. So we can use a file called dump e2fs and we give the raw disk as the argument. We use sudo because we need sudo to access raw de device files. And this dump e2fs actually dumps a lot of interesting information about uh, about the file system, specifically it dumps the super block. Here, as you can see, the, there are a few important details. There are 256 inodes. So that is the inode count. 
and there are 2048 disk blocks, okay? And each block is of size 1KB, 1024, that is indicated by the block size, okay? And each group, like there are 8192 blocks in each group, that's the maximum number of blocks that can be in each group. And each group also has 256 inodes, okay? And we, ha we have only one block, one block group in this disk. So, and uh, that is indicated by group zero. So here, there are a few interesting things. So block bitmap starts at block 10. So that means, so at block 10, we can actually see the bitmap indicating which disk blocks like which blocks within group zero are occupied and which blocks are free. Similarly, at block 11, we can see the inode bitmap of block group zero, okay? So we can now, with this information, we can actually try to dump like block at 10 to see how the block bitmap looks like. So this we can do using DD, DD is uh, as the name suggests, it's this dump. So that the data dump. And so here IF is the input file, like we read from raw disk that is dev loop six, and we read one block, which is of size 1024, because we know that the block size is 1024. And then we skip the 11 blocks because we know that the inode map starts at block 11. So we've, uh, we skip the first 11 blocks and then count equal to one says that uh, to dump one block, which is 1024 bytes. And we use XSD to look at the bits. So here, as you can see, there are few bits, the initial few bits, which are one that indicates those I nodes are allocated. Whereas there are all, most of the other bits are zero that indicates those I nodes are free. Similarly, you can see the block map uh, by looking at block 10. So here you can see there are many ones which indicate there are many data blocks that are used in this block group. Okay, now uh, you can use LS LI to get uh, the inode number corresponding to each file. For instance, here in this case, we see that uh, the file AA has inode 12. And when you when we look into the contents of AA, this is my content. So here we can use debug FS to actually know the disk block that corresponds to inode 12. Okay, so basically we can use debug FS to dump the inode 12. Okay, so here, as you can see, we are looking at inode 12. It says uh, the file name is file type is regular, it has modes. It displays various information within the inode. And finally, we see the blocks that corresponding that corresponds to this inode 12. So there is only one block, which is block 513. Okay. Note that the inode 12 belongs to AA. Okay. And the first data block of uh, inode 12 is block 513. Now we can use the same DD command to look at block 513. As expected, the content of block 513 is my content because that's exactly the content of AA, right? So this is how, like, this shows, like, this gives a small illustration of how ext2 file system works and what are the internal structures of file system. So you can use various other commands, like similar commands, to see the content of symlink, to see how directories are stored, so on and so forth. Experiment with it and try to understand the different, uh, like how directories are stored in the XC2 file system and how like I know number is associated with directories, within directories and file names. Thank you.